We are at the Seiko factory in Finland and then it's Driven Moose and Whitetail. It was like a shy horse kind of trotting out of the forest. Lead free Lockton, Roy wants to be proactive, not reactive. We're after foxes and fallow with an alternative round. For my own sake then we are going to be quite critical on it and if there is something that's not working then we'll flag it up. Happy Christmas and welcome to Field Sports Britain. I think it says in our slogan, demand perfection. We don't compromise with the product. And this is the hammering phase. That was the man we test shoot every rifle and make sure that it will do the promised uh, minimum one minute angle. Or better. I say Seiko, they say Sako. We're here to see how they make the rifles, the ammunition, and also see how they hunt. Mr. Childerly is clearly on a mission, and that's because the Seiko guys have laid on an incredible few days for us, together with some other well known British sporting journalists. Dom Holtham, Editor-in-Chief of Rifle Shooter magazine. Shooting Times Editor Patrick Galbraith will be photobombing his way around Finland. Technical Writer Chris Parkin. And then there's Carl Waktari from GMK, which distributes Seiko and Ticker in the UK. As part of the trip, we've been invited on a traditional driven moose and whitetail deer hunt. Of course, the white tail originate in America. They are now cherished by the Finnish. Thanks to a release of just four animals in the 1930s, they are now part of the landscape. What about the, uh, the white tail venison? Is that as good as moose meat? It's better. Oh, really? If you ask from me. Is that controversial? <laughs> <laughs> it is good, but you have to take all the fat away. Otherwise, it's like eating candles. <laughs> Again, just to re relieve the stone. This is the first time most of the group has been to Finland, let alone been behind the scenes at Seiko. There's a lot to take in, but we cannot start anywhere else than with the rifle manufacturing. In the heart of the accuracy of the barrel, of course, is the Goldhammer Fortune. It gives the best rifling you can get and. Uh, the surface quality of the inside of the barrel, of course, is crucial. Is custom rifling? Yeah. Yeah, that's the real one. Yeah, that's the real mandrel. Would you ever go down the straight pull route? Is that something you would think about? Of course, you always have to consider, but uh, our core is the bolt action, and uh, we like uh, how it works. We don't see any reason at the moment to change that. So, at the moment, we are staying with that. But of course, we will keep our eyes open and see what is happening. I imagine the Finnish people are very proud and they're proud yeah. to have a rifle that's made and manufactured here. But it's also a country where you have extremes. You yeah. have extremes of, yeah. of, of temperature, you have extremes yeah. of, of precipitation, rain, snow. Yeah. It has to survive, otherwise you, know, yeah. you wouldn't have a business. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think that's one of the key why, why our product is considered very... Yeah, it's very robust. It will uh, last from father to the son, <laughs> of course, and uh, because uh, everything we make is, is steel, only the best uh, material. The, the machine cannot do all the things that the, that the person can do, because she can look the barrel from different sizes, she can look at the aesthetic of the, of the barrel and so on. So, so the human quality control yeah. is, is, is it? still superior? Yeah, in this phase, yes. 
Seiko will be celebrating its 100th birthday in a few years, so they have had plenty of time to get it right. For the journalists to be allowed to hunt here, they have to pass their hunting test. They are all given Seiko 85s with Steiner scopes and Seiko ammo to make some holes in the targets before the test begins. We're going to shoot from 75 meters and you have to score four hits on this circle which represent the vital areas of, of the moose. You have uh, one minute and 30 seconds to do it, so take your time. After this we are going to go and see the old test which was quite a bit more challenging where there was actually moving moose targets, so we can try that one as well. Uh, no, Dominic! Good group in that was. Good group in. Good group in, very happy with that. Pressure was on. Ready for hunt. Ready for hunt. Uh, Team UK passes with flying colours. Then it is off for a traditional evening's entertainment. And yes, that does involve a sauna. Believe me when I say that footage is best left alone. The following morning is cold and bright and the Finnish hospitality is warm. With supreme efficiency, all the hunters are supplied with radios and safety instructions. Our gamekeeper is Auntie Eklund and we are hunting with Carton and Rister. The growth of the whitetail population has changed hunting here forever. And tell me about the whitetail because that is something that your maybe your great grand grandfather would never have actually hunted. You're right. Our our whitetail population is now in the highest point, and it's growing all the time. It's because of the agriculture. They have more food. They can make more calves, and they are doing rather well. And we are very happy to have a whitetail in our area. It's, it's very good hunting, it's very good meat, and it's exciting also. It's totally different, because obviously I've done driven ball before, and deer, and moose on. And um, it's two new species with moose. I think I'd just be excited to see one, and I don't shoot one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's a white dog, it's a white dog away in. Again, totally new thing to see. So, I hope I don't get stage fright, just start looking at it and forget to shoot. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's good. The drone flies over us. So the plan is this morning we're doing three separate drives. Um, we just done the first one, it took about just under an hour. Um, we got the radios, we heard there's apparently two moose have been shot. So obviously they're collecting us, collecting us up and we're going to do another one now. Um, over the back, here comes the lander over there, they'll get ready. We finished the driven hunting now, we've had uh, four drives throughout the day, so like mini drives, small drives, where they go around the back and, and um, just push them out. Not drives, they're more moves than drives. And um been interesting. Um, there's been two, three moves shot, and the last one being Mr. Holton himself, just over the actually started behind the rock just there. So the, there was obviously a moose behind the rock. Only just in front of us, 
dog pushed him right up through and apparently it could be a bull moose so uh, yeah so we're done for the driven so we've got one more chance today we're going to go to the uh, high seats I think so we'll wait up until dark so yeah been, been a good day cold good on the area forestry it's great news and we have one last chance before we lose the light all the hunters are taken to a high seat the day is starting to take its toll <laughs> After that power nap, Paul is as sharp as a pin. I see on the menu tonight we've got carrots and salt lick. Um, obviously that's the, the food of choice for the white tail. As that's all we're allowed to shoot tonight, we can shoot white tail and roe deer. Um, they don't like the moose being shot in the evenings. Um, it's quite nice, they've got certain rules like this. Um, so we're here until dark now, so fingers crossed we can get, get a white tail. Paul doesn't fancy a shot, but just to watch. Back at the lodge, someone has shot his first moose. Um, and I had expected to have an interesting tour and learn about Sacco rifles uh, and to maybe spend a couple of quiet days of, uh, of meditation in the forest, get to know a new hunting culture. I did not expect to have uh, the privileged opportunity to shoot a wonderful trophy and, and uh, to get... I've stalked obviously quite a lot of deer over the years um, and you know, stalked big red deer, but they, I've never seen anything like it. It, it, was like a, it was like a shy horse kind of trotting out of the forest and uh, yeah, in, in, impressive, impressive animals to see. And there wasn't really enough time to think about it, which is probably a good thing. Um, so yeah, 50 metres, so relatively close range and obviously a very big target. Uh, but I've never seen an animal react so little to a 180 grain 308 bullet. It literally did not flinch at the first shot, even though it was a good shot. Um, and uh, so I took the kind of the discretion being the better part of valour and put a couple of backup shots in until it eventually fell down. Um, but yeah, all, all three shots were good, uh, but they are just big animals. And a lot of the guys here recommend you know, 9.3 or even 404 Jeffrey as a, as a, a calibre for moose. So um, I felt a little bit undergunned, but it did the job. Next time, the hunt continues and we learn more about Seiko ammo. For more information about their rifles, go to seiko.fi and if you want to hunt in Finland, it might be an idea to visit kartonandrista.fi. Better luck next time, Paul. And well done, Dom, a magnificent specimen. Talking of which, what goes on in the sauna stays in the sauna. And on that note, hot, flustered and flagellated, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Boxing Day will, as ever, see hounds supported by huge crowds of people of all ages at meets across the country. To find your local meet, the Countryside Alliance has launched an interactive map to find your local pack. You can search the map by postcode. The British government is reviewing air gun rules in England and Wales. It wants to stop children from using air guns and air pistols. It's taking advice from the RSPCA and the Gun Control Network, as well as the Gun Trade Association. For more, go to bit.ly forward slash airgunbill. British Columbia has announced an immediate ban on grizzly bear hunting. And the reason? It feels it's no longer socially acceptable. First Nations are the only exception to the ban. They maintain an Aboriginal right to hunt grizzlies for food, social and ceremonial purposes. One Federation spokesman representing hunters and fishermen said he's disappointed to see the government making decisions based on public emotion rather than good science. Winners of the Monocular Hunting Video Awards 2017 have been announced at a party in Copenhagen. 
Best hunting clip of the year came from Ulrich Horskopf for his film of a boar charging. Best professional video of the year goes to AJ de Rossa. And the winner of best hunting video of the year are Nordica Outdoors and Preto Hunting for this film about a hunting exchange between Denmark and Switzerland. And finally, this Christmas tide to Nazareth, where the locals are hunting porcupines. Only they aren't hunting porcupines, says Israel's Antiquity Authority, Lower Galilee Region's Theft Prevention Unit, which found one man down a hole at a 2,000-year-old grave. Two other men got away. Ironically, earlier this month, porcupine hunting was the reason behind the discovery of a 2,200-year-old Hasmonean period oil lamp. You are now up to date with Phil Sports Channel News. Stuck in stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now for a last minute Christmas stocking filler. Daisy's got a range of slingshots. Next up, we'd be foolish to ignore the development of green bullets. From the professionals in the field, we hear good, we hear bad, we hear very bad. So what do we do? Fight to keep the best, which is lead? Absolutely. Look for the next best green bullet on the market? Totally. Here's Roy to find out more. The main reason for coming out this morning is Christmas is coming and the freezers are a little bit empty. So we want a, a little bit of Christmas venison, hopefully. But one of the other reasons for coming out is we've got some new lead-free ammunition that I want to test and I want to put through its paces and see what sort of results we can get. The Forestry Commission have adopted them and from all the reports and all the data that's coming back they're giving just as good if not better results than lead bullets and that's something that I think we need to be looking at quite seriously as whichever label we want to give ourselves custodians of the countryside, hunters, stalkers, lead is becoming more of an elephant in the room for everybody. Um, and we can't deny the issues that lead is causing and we have to be very careful from a falconry standpoint to not feed our birds um, anything that could have possibly been um, shot because obviously we, we realise that um, it only takes a very small ingestion of lead uh, for a, a bird of prey to, to cause major issues. So it's something that I really, really am keen to try and champion. But again, on the other hand, it's got to be something that will give me the performance in the field um, and give me the terminal ballistics as well that I'm after. Hopefully we'll get a chance to use it this morning and then we're going to scrutinise the results and um, just see what happens. Personally, I don't shoot the white deer unless they're getting, getting old because they are amazing markers to have in the herd because we've got a, a really poor visibility this morning with the mips and they're coming along here and <laughs> unfortunately they, um, they do shine out. So she's not going to be on her own. There'll be some more with her. I know like this particular group of does that feeds through here, there's normally a dozen or so. No, we're just going to work our way around and see if we can get it on top of them. Really is tricky this morning. Obviously it's very, very misty in the wood. <laughs> Still barking there. We've got deer barking at us. We've walked into them. And it's almost impossible to see them through the mist, but they're obviously just picked us up. They've just started barking. We're gonna have to try and move around on them and just see if we can get a shot. But it's incredibly still. There is no wind at all. We're walking on Rice Krispies. So everything is against us, but... It looks like we've really missed our opportunity on the deer. And it's my fault, unfortunately, because you'll probably note that I didn't have a pair of binoculars around my neck. And it is a caramel sin coming out, stalking without a pair of binoculars. So what we're gonna do now is we've got an electronic caller with us this morning. And I've got a few different mating foxes and vixen calls on there because they've already been screaming up and a lot of dogs are following vixens at the moment. We're gonna give it a call give it a run through and just see if we can get him to respond and come in.
is still the other side. absolutely perfectly then. A beautiful response. I know that fox doesn't respond anymore to a couple of the whistles that we use because we've called him in before and I've shot a fix in front of him and he saw it. So he's wised up to that and that's why I just wanted to try a little bit of uh, a different call. And so if you can't get to a boy by his belly, you can certainly do it through love. Wow, look at that. That is absolutely amazing. And he's, a, he's missing a, a couple of teeth there. And he's got a bit of wear, a little bit of tar to build up. But, I mean, he is just a stunning example of a fox. Absolutely beautiful. Right, let's have a look and see what happened with the bullet. Yep, there we go, dog fox. So again, he just couldn't resist the thought of a young lady. Feeling the front here, that's obviously hit the shoulder as it's gone through. Um, and done a lot of damage there. So I'm just looking to see if we've got an exit. No exit wound, but he was facing on a little bit, so he was definitely quartering on. So I'll just open up and just see what we've got. And, I mean, from the very start, we can see we've got some very good damage on the shot site here. I'll just cut that bit there and just open the the shoulder through here so that would be the remnants of his shoulder blade all the way through there so it's it's hit that and really started to pass on the energy transfer yeah if that had been a, uh, a roe deer or a mint jack or something like that yeah you would have lost the shoulder but we haven't got any any excessive trauma further up into the carcass so that was that's the remnants of the heart so it's gone through Completely broken the heart up and into the lungs there as well. We'll take that out and see what else we can see in there. Let's see if I can maybe find the bullet because I can't find where it's exited. Okay, no, I found the exit. There we go. And we've got, I didn't think we had an exit wound, but you have. There's the exit wound just through there. So it's gone all the way through the body, taken out all the vital organs. And again, as I say, it was quartering on. So it's gone in through the shoulder, completely obliterated the shoulder, taken out all of the vital organs, traveled through the body cavity, and it's exited just in front of the back leg there. It's given up most of its energy. We've got all the hydrostatic shock where it should be, um, and it's not damaged the rest of the carcass either. So, if, not that we're gonna eat the fox, but you know, if it was a, a smaller deer, so if it was a muntjac or if it was a Chinese water deer, um, yeah, we wouldn't have had excessive damage from it. So from a, an 80 grain um, soft point type bullet, that is absolutely superb. And you can't get better than that, as I say, dropped on the spot. So hopefully over the next few months when we are trialing it with some of the different animals, um, we're gonna give it an honest assessment and, and hopefully we'll get the same results. But yeah, for my, um, for my own sake, then we are gonna be quite critical on it. Um, and if there is something that's not working, then we'll flag it up. Thank you, Roy. Now from greens to the multi-colours of hunting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewer David Roper sends me this. He is bow hunting in North Queensland, Australia, where he shoots a large boar at just 10 metres. Matt Dubber of Air Arms Hunting SA sounds increasingly like the crusty old man of African hunting as he goes after Niala with Thorndale safaris on a spot and stalk outing in the Eastern Cape. Here's how hunting money stops African poachers. PH Graham Corwood tells the American NRA about his anti-poaching efforts and shows off examples 
examples of poachers' favourite tools. US duck hunting channel Outdoor Limits is in Colorado for a 14-man limit. The amount of decoys they use is staggering, more than 100. Two North Ossetia and Dagestan. A Spanish team puts Zaur, Zeiss and Norma to the test on a hunt in the Caucasus Mountains. A driven hunt in French with Bisson de la Salonque. At the end of the hunt, the shooter spots a roe doe. Staying in France, Alexis Chasse is walking up birds with his dog. It's all action and the captions at the bottom show his excuses for missing as well as his triumph at hitting. And finally, I love this. Hunters in New Zealand put their dogs on a Kiwi avoidance course so that they don't bump or even bump off any of the country's endangered national bird. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And as well as that lot, we have got our very own Field Sports Africa this week. We're out with the remarkable Dr. Kevin Robinson darting rhinos at his Southern African Wildlife College, where he teaches the professional hunters and rangers of tomorrow. Those are the people defending Africa's wild animals on the ground, not wandering around TV studios trying to get laid like the antis do. Plus, we are off to Limpopo province for one of Africa's most exciting quarry species, the Cape Buffalo. You can click to watch Field Sports Africa, just click on the i button on the screen. You can go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Whilst there, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook. You can like us on Twitter or the other way around. And best of all, you can pop your email address into our constant contact form on our register page. We'll contact you about this show and our other shows, but this show, Field Sports Britain, is at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. Goodbye and happy Christmas. Mm -hmm.